Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks. This is our E36M3 and this is our new E36 and E36M3 Driftworks CS2 coilover kit. So this has been a real long time in the making. I think people were asking us to do this maybe 10 years ago. The Driftworks CS2 coilovers are really well known in uh, the Nissan community. Uh, we did special kits for them, I don't know, 12 years ago, something like that, and they're one of the most popular things that we sell. So this is actually more than just an E36 version of that kit. It's based around digressive dampers. Um, so a really clear difference now between this and the HSD Monopro kit that we've recently updated. Uh, this is like the level up and one of the most important things aside from digressive dampers is that it's a true rear kit. So as you can see here, true rear coilover and one of the other most important things is I've designed an offset rear top mount for it. So it gives you clearance to the body for the coilover spring. So that was the product of just three it says just, so that's what they're like normally, and that's what previously we've sold for true rear versions of the HSD Monopro, which again is popular, but I always thought it could, we could do better with our own version. Uh, and then we did these two versions of offsets, ending up with this, which is plastic, live tested on the car, and uh, finished up with it in metal, ready to go. So we'll be fitting this kit in this video, or more specifically, Jay will. Um, but uh, there's nothing too difficult about it at all. Obviously, we're super familiar with E36s. We've probably owned 10 of them over the years between the owners and the various staff that have worked here over the years. Uh, the, my E30 M3 track car has E36 suspension on it. These will be going on that as well. Um, this already has brand new HSD Monopro coilovers on it, which again, we developed on this car. Um, and like I said, this is just the next level up. I should also probably note that we have E46 and E46 M3 on the way that are going to be fitted to the V10 M3 at some point, but that's, uh, we haven't got those in stock yet. Whereas we do currently have, I think we've got 40 kits of these on the shelf ready to go. So what's a digressive damper? other than marketing nonsense. <laughs> that's, that's the correct phrase. <laughs> um, actually, it's a pretty cool thing. So essentially, it's just a change in the damper curve, the damper properties um, of the valving inside the damper. And all it means is that it basically has a harder start point. So it's stiffer in the first instance for like your low speed damping and then softens up for some of the high speed damping and how that relates to you on track. Um, um, is that essentially smaller bumps, uh, the damping's harder, smaller movements in the damper, the damper valving is harder. Um, it means that you get more stability, better feel. Um, it kind of feels like firmer suspension, but then when you get a big bump, a curb, or you know, a pothole, massive movements in the wheel travel, it'll absorb that shock much better. So it's not like blow off valve technology that you'd find on Olin's TTX or anything like that, but is kind of a step in the right direction of the best of both worlds where you have uh, sort of firm suspension that also has compliance for sort of the bigger hit the bigger um, damping requirements on the car. So yeah, top mounts I've already mentioned on the back, that's a pillar ball top mount, it's offset to clear the body. Um, so on E36s in particular, and my E30, which we've had to chop quite a bit out of in the rear to actually get spring the, the spring in and have the clearance that we need. Shouldn't need to do that with these, these are offset, they push the coilover out towards the wheel. You've got to bear that in mind with your um, wheel choices. If you're going super wide, this is essentially closer to the wheel, ever so slightly, but it shouldn't bother most people. This is uh, uh, what we know as the compact bottom bracket. We originally designed this for the compact specifically because it, it removed the spacer from here, which meant that the shock um, could be a lot shorter on its um, full compression. Uh, but it also has an offset to it, which means that you can gain clearance where, wherever you need. On compacts and E30s, it's drive shafts that are a problem, but this is actually quite useful to move the shock body away from tires um, in certain situations. But again, it also means you can have this super long stroke damper, which is like 145 mil stroke, if I remember correctly. I'll put that on screen if I'm not correct. Um, whilst having its minimum compressed length is tiny compared to a lot of damper 
dampers out there, even though it's a mono, monotube damper. See on the front as well, it's a monotube damper again. So I don't know whether you can see in there, but sort of, sort of yeah, yeah, nice and close up. There, there you go. There you go. So it's an inverted mono, monotube damper again. Uh, it has this massively low friction coating that we use. It reduces stiction. So even though you've got your separate roller bearing spring top cup here, which has roller bearings in here, so you don't get any boinging um, or resistance when turning. Yeah, this is just the next level and it actually helps damper movement overall as well, not just in terms of rotation, but in terms of stroke as well. It has the offset camber caster adjustable top mounts on it. So you can vary your caster at the top mount as well as cam camber. And I use this on the E30. I've got these exact top mounts um, because mine's modified to E36 struts. I use these to actually increase and decrease the wheel base as well, because I can move it at the bottom and the top. So that gives you all the adjustability that you'd need there. Uh, so the only other thing here is that they are supplied with the separate anti-roll bar drop link tab. This is obviously E36 M3 specific. If you have a non M3, uh, unless you've converted to strut mount anti-roll bar drop links, uh, you can actually remove that. Uh, spring rates on this, it's 10k front, 7k rear. Uh, 7k because it's true rear obviously is very different when you're looking at the inboard standard uh, monopro kits and the dual tech kits that we do for these because they use the inboard type spring so that increases your spring ratio dramatically there is a softer kit than this as well it will be even more compliant uh, we do do custom springs um, for a got a lot of choices for these and there is also a drift specific version of this kit um, although drifting suspension is not a thing on a drift car for extra traction you'd often run a softer rear and um, which combined with the really long stroke on these dampers which should give you a lot of forward bite, a lot of traction in a drift car as well. But yeah, just to be clear, this there's nothing specific about drift suspension. It says drift works on it, but as you can see by most of the stuff that we've done over the past 10 years, we're very track biased. And what works on track, dampers wise and hardware wise, works on a drift car as well. The kit comes with helper springs as well, which will show you how we set these up. Basically, we like to um, have as much droop on a damper as it will allow, with the bump stop coming into play at the right time, and these are an essential part of getting that shock set up correctly to do that. But yeah, that's probably about it for the spec. I'm sure I've forgotten some things, but uh, it's time to probably get the car on the ramp and get these things installed. So I got the car over the ramp, it's not lifted at all. You'll notice there's some tape on each of the arches here uh, because literally just fitted a um, brand new set of HD Monopros when we first got this car. The car has been aligned and corner weighted perfectly and only been used on one track day. So uh, it seems a shame to start from scratch again and have to do all the corner weights. So all I'm gonna do is pen, tape measure, camber gauge. I'm gonna go around each corner and make a mark of measurement from the lip there to the arch here, like that. Get the camber gauge and put that there. Same for all the other corners before I lift this thing up. And then it should make it nice and easy once we've got the new CS2s on it to have it exactly the same and not need to corner weight it again. That's all four corners. We'll obviously be getting it on the four poster to do uh, an alignment check after we've done this, but this is just a starting point. It's very useful to do this for us because it's much easier to go up and down on the lift, make adjustments, drop the car back down. And even though the floor here isn't leveled, like our ramp is perfectly leveled on the locks, we're really obsessive about it. This floor is not leveled, but it doesn't matter um, because this is just the starting point and that ride height will actually change as the springs settle a little bit as well. First track day, you'll always get a bit of sag on any spring, no matter how good it is, as it kind of wears in. Uh, so yeah, at least we've got some reference of the ride heights we need to get back to. Now let's crack on with swapping these over to the CS2s. So 
So Jay's got the Mono Pro off for me, um, and because, as I said, we've already set the bump stops in the perfect place for this car, I'm just going to take this measurement from here to the center point here, and then copy it over to here. So I've already done that, spun that down. Um, we are going to use some um, anti-seize. We're just using white lithium, white lithium grease on this, but. We tell people to generally use like a copper slip or something like that as an anti-seize. Very important, disassemble them, put them back together with the copper slip. So this, just so you're aware, is the left side of the car at the back. And obviously the studs are gonna go in and we're pushing this outboard. So it goes that way around. And then just so you know which brackets which, because these aren't labeled, uh, this one, essentially we're pushing the coil over towards the back of the car and outboard, so away from the chassis. So that's what that one looks like. We'll get it installed now, and now show what it looks like on the car. Let's get some purge in it, I guess. Have that, have that. And we will do here and here. Obviously, these are gonna move quite a bit to adjust our all of the ride height is going to be done on the spring here, on the spring preload, which I know is contrary to how you describe a separate spring preload and ride height adjustable coilover, but this is how you do it properly. So that's lubed up good now. Um, so the measurement, which you might be interested to know, um, is only relevant vaguely relevant if you're running 17s and a 235 40 17 tire um, if you've got different wheel size uh, basically tire height then your bump stop is going to need to come into play at a different point but for these wheels this is the optimum that we found and that is measuring out measured from the very top of the uh, top mount there to, to this point is 52.2 just there Centimeters. Yeah, it's nobody uses inches, come on. <laughs> Old people and foreigners. <laughs> foreigners, you mean Americans, they're the only ones left, aren't they? Foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> Bend our customer base, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, we've got 52 there, we're gonna lock this off. Um, because this is not a McPherson strut um, version of the coilover, you only need to lock that off kind of quite tight. Obviously on the front, where you've got rotational force, you need to do these locking collars up super tight, but we'll show you that later down the line. You have to forgive me, these guys being super noisy. We just had a big work wheels delivery. So loads of happy customers getting their works. And once again, if they don't get there in one piece, remember these faces. <laughs> 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 and obviously, don't forget to remove your original spring. I mean, it'd get pretty active. <laughs> Oversteer would be active. <laughs> You can see here how offset that is and how close the nut gets to the top there. It's actually not as close as it looks in this. You might be able to just see a bit better there. It's got clearance here and as the suspension moves, essentially that nut moves away from this point here. But yeah, be aware of it in case you do something weird with your alignment or anything, you might have that as an interference point. Just make sure this one's locked off tight. There you go, that's the wheel done up. And that's with the bracket that way around. You can actually flip it the other way and potentially it'll clear as well. So you could use the left side bracket on the right side and vice versa. It'll move it inboard ever so slightly. It looks like it would clear, but we have no reason to choose that way around on this because we're only using a, what's that, an eight inch wide wheel, is it? Is it? Eight, it's a 235 on an eight, I think, or something, nine. isn't it? It was a 235 on a nine. Yeah. That's pretty decent then. Sweet. So obviously we haven't set the ride height at all here. Looking at that, it's probably going to be a bit low, but we'll have a look. Yeah, yeah touch low. So I'll get my measuring stick out. 
you're looking for 60 mil is where this is supposed to be and it's 100 so that is like 50 from the same eye line position 53 mil it's come up seven mil and that should be pretty easy just wind up the well spring perch yeah measure this one more yeah might as well uh, yeah we need to give this a good bounce actually yeah. Don't we as well yeah measure 40. so bring it up yeah sort of seven mil ten mil Okay, so I'm just going to wind that spring perch up so no ride height adjustment is done uh, by winding the damper in and out of the bottom bracket in this case um, because we've set the length of the damper perfectly for the bump stop to come into play at the right time. So all ride height adjustment is done on the spring perch. There we go. Attempt two. Not quite enough. Couple Another, more. yeah, good. Two mil. And same again. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm measuring from the point where the spring mounts. So let me just get up there. So, so see the silver bit? Yeah. There, that's where the tape measure is crammed in. And we're on 217 two, millimeters. 217. And remember that this is specific to our car, but at least it gives you a good idea of where to start. And then a bit of double C spanner action. Okay. Locked off tight. Again, because this is just the back ones, um, it doesn't have any rotational force put on it. You only need to do these with the C spanners. The ones at the front will use a hammer and a drift to lock off. 62 now. 62 is perfect, that's what we want. So, because that'll basically factor in a bit of, a bit a bit of, of sag. Yeah, spring sag the first time we use this. Two mil overs, perfect. And same on this one, 52. Sweet. So, yeah. Cool. Onto the front. Way more complicated, but specifically because it's an M3 and we need to be super careful uh, with getting the orientation of the anti robot drop link tab in the right place. But Jay will show you, he's done it enough times for me. That's the three bolts out that hold the damper to the hub. Winner. Let's get this new strut set up ready to go on the car. A couple of things before you begin. These come with a anti-roll bar tab. Uh, if you're not running M3, simply take the bottom bracket off and the locking collars and whiz that off because the standard E36s mount the anti-roll bar to the bottom arm. The other thing to do is fit the remote adjusters. So you need to remove this bottom cup here. Uh, they're supplied with the standard length adjuster. We do hold in stock different length adjusters, depending on your setup. And if you want some for the back to run standard trims in the boot, we'll have something the right length that you can get to come through. But in this car, we don't, and they're only supplied with front ones in the kit. So we'll get the measurements transferred over now. So we're in the total length. Total length from the bottom of the top mount to the very bottom of the strut are 572 millimeters. So I've sort of set this one up the same and pre greased it the same as we did the back. So 572 total length, 290 to the bottom of the spring, which may need to change on this car because the spring rate's slightly different, and 36 zero to the uh, gap between the anti-roll bar tab and the locking collar or well, not the gap but the join between the anti-roll bar tab and the locking collar that may need to go up and up and down a bit when we go on the car just to get the anti-roll bar sitting in the perfect position but i'll go through that when we're in position <laughs> Now we'll go through camber and caster. I know that this car needs to be running three degrees camber. I've matched up the top mount best I can to the other one and I hope it works and I'll show you why now. This kit has a caster adjustable top mount which just means you can loosen off the three strut top bolts and you can slide the 
strut top backwards and forwards. To lock it off, all you do is tighten these when you've got it in position. But that does mean that the camber adjustment is a bit of a pain because two of the bolts are under the strut top. So every time you want to change camber, you need to drop the strut top down, undo those, slide it in and out. It's a bit of a fiddle, but it is worth it. So I'm going to take a measurement best I can from the old strut top and try and get it into exactly the same position. Next up, time to set up the drop links. Ignore this step completely if you're not running an M3. Any non-M3 E36 would mount the anti-roll bar to the bottom arm, so this is completely irrelevant. Irrelevant. Now we're going to talk about setting the anti-roll. Disaster. Now I've got the right height set, we're going to talk about setting up the anti-roll bar drop link. It's very important that we get the tab in the right orientation. If you don't do that, as you, as you go lock to lock, it will cause this to come loose and start spinning, which, you know, in really bad circumstances could hit your wheel or hit your tyre, so it's a, very, it's a very important step. All we need to make sure of is that the ball joints on the drop link have free play at full lock in both directions, otherwise you're going to put all that stress into the collar. To do that, it's pretty simple. First of all, take a guess. I mean, we'll start with going off my other ones. I've got somewhere to start. So I'll start with it at around about that location. Maybe a little bit more that way. Nip the collars up. Don't go too mad on them yet in case you have to adjust this again. But just nip those up so that it can't move. Then, We'll go full lock this way first because it'll be easier for you to see with the camera there. Full lock that way. And just make sure you've got free play there. See how both the ball joints can move in the full lock position. Then the same the other way. Switch the lock the other way. And just make sure you've got free play again. You're looking for, you know, to set it up nicely, you'd want the same amount of free play in both directions. And that is not bad. I'm going to call that good. Another thing just to check when setting this up is that in full droop, you can get your hand or your finger in between the roll bar and the lower arm. Now in full droop, this is as close as it's ever gonna get to this. As the car goes up, that'll push away. Last couple of bits to finish off. First thing, we need to lock these collars. Because these are McPherson, they've got rotational force on them. So you're gonna struggle with the locking collars to get them tight enough. We use a bit of aluminium bar, just because if you use steel, it'll destroy the locking collar, so that's why I use aluminium. Just get it in there. Give it a few taps. Same on this one. Do it a little bit that way. And a little bit that way, just so nothing moves. And keep working it till it stops moving. Same on the spring perch. And then the last thing. Just clip your brake pipes back to the strut. Job done. Now the suspension's finished, I'm going to get on with another job that I've been meaning to do to this car. We've got some new pads and discs, I'm probably sure some of you have already commented that these are disgusting. James was getting brake judge on the last track day we did, so we have got new pads and discs for it. And while we're there, I'm going to get on, I'm going to paint the calipers as well, front and back. So I'll get on with that, then we'll get the car in the alignment ramp and just check that everything's still in spec. That's a little bit cleaner. We've treated it to a new set of RSL29s on the front, as well as new AP discs, and the rears have just been painted. But time to clean up my brake bleeding mess and get the wheels on and we'll get it on the alignment ramp. Okay, back is sorted. Total of two mil tow in. One mil each side, onto the front. 
And there we go, that's the front. One mil toe out each side on the front. Nice work, brother. Looking smart. Well, it looks exactly the same, but we know what's underneath it is uh, pretty, pretty awesome. So, so yeah, damping, um, that is really down to you to adjust. The, they're 16 way adjustable on the damping, um, which is really precise clicks. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff with um, 32, 48 clicks, it really doesn't matter. It does the same thing, but on these ones, you can actually tell the difference between click 16 and click 15, or click 10 and then click nine, for example. Um, we always say just start from the middle. That's both front and rear, uh, eight clicks, see what it feels like, drive it, see how your car reacts and just go from there, adjust as you desire. Also, it's worth again reiterating that everything that you've seen in this video is just done for our car. It's not really a how-to, it's just us uh, fitting this kit to our car that previously had a set of HSD monopros fitted to it. Um, so again, take everything with a pinch of salt, be super careful with what you do. If you don't feel confident, get some expert help is all I'd say. So yeah, a bit of a different video from us on this channel. We have the shop channel, which we would normally put some stuff like this on, but the E36 is so relevant to what we do and the sort of the people that follow us on the main channel, I figured I'd put it on here, see how it goes down. If you do fancy getting a set of CS2s, obviously they're available at driftworks.com. Um, we also carry about a thousand HSD kits in stock. Uh, we're one of the biggest distributors, if not the biggest distributor in the UK for BC, for Tyne. And same goes for everything else that's fitted to this car, sort of the wheels and uh, tyres that we sell, everything like that. Check it out if you fancy it and uh, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.